Welcome, math enthusiasts, to an exciting journey through the Highgate 11 Plus Mathematics Paper A. Get ready to unlock the secrets of this challenging exam and dive into the fascinating world of numbers, patterns, and problem solving. Now, whether you're a student preparing for the 11 plus exam or simply eager to explore the wonders of mathematics, this walkthrough is designed to make learning engaging and enjoyable. From tricky word problems to mind bending calculations, we will tackle each challenging step of each question, equipping you with the skills and confidence to excel. Prepare to be captivated by interactive visuals, animated explanations, and real-life examples that bring the numbers to life. So get your pencils ready, your thinking caps on, and let's dive into the world of Highgate 11 plus mathematics. Wonderful. Over to question number one. So the following questions are about a butcher's shop. So Kareem buys seven burgers and five steaks and burgers cost 61p each and steaks cost 84p each so how much did kareem spend in total well let's go ahead and calculate this right away so we'll have seven burgers multiplied by 61 plus five steaks multiplied by 84p each and if we add that together we get eight pound 47 and that's as simple as it would get. Seven times 61 pence, that's four pound 27, plus five times 84 pence, which is four pound 20, and that gives us eight pound 47. Over to question two. Sausages come in packs of eight, and each pack costs one pound 30. And James spends nine pound 10 on sausages. So how many sausages did James get? Well, the first thing we need to understand is how many packets can go into nine pound 10. So if we have nine pound 10 and we divide this by one pound 30, we'd be left with seven. Taking that into consideration, we now know that there are seven packs, but in each pack there are eight. So if we multiply this together, we get 56. Please remember to pause the video at any given time, attempt the question, and then press play when you're ready to continue. I hope that was clear. Let's now move into part C. Tyler buys 16 chicken wings and receives 14 pound 72 change from a 20 pound note. So what is the price? And remember now, they're asking of a chicken wing, so it's one. So what do you think we need to do first here? Well, we can take the 20 pound note and we can find the difference between that and the change. So that means we'll have 20 minus 14 pound 72, and that would give us five pound 28. So now we know 16 wings cost five pounds 28. But because they're asking for a chicken wing, we have to then divide this value by 16. And so by doing so, we get 33 pence. And that is the cost of one chicken wing. Let's go for question D. So the butcher also sells slices of turkey. And Donald buys three quarters of the slices in the shop. Alicia bought three slices. So how many more slices than Alicia did Donald buy? Well, let's take a look at this. So if Donald buys three quarters of the slices and Alicia buys a sixth of the remaining slices, we can understand that Alicia got three slices. So a sixth of something will equal three slices. So all we have to merely do is now multiply six by three, and we know that's 18. So a sixth of 18 is three. So now we know that there were 18 remaining. 
And now let's reverse engineer this once more. Because Donald bought three quarters, we know that there's a quarter left, which means that there were 18 left. And now in order to find out how many Donald bought, we merely need to multiply this by three for each side. And then what do we get left with? 54. So now we know that Donald bought 54 and Alicia bought three. So how many more slices did Alicia, so how many more slices than Alicia did Donald buy? So we need to get the difference. So we have 54 minus three, which is 51, and that is our answer, 51 slices. So step one, always try to highlight what areas of the question link together from three slices to one sixth, then find out the value of the total amount, which then you know is going to be seen as one quarter. And then you can allow that to work out the next step. I hope that question was clear. We're now going to move over to part E. Lamb chops are three times more expensive than pork chops. So again, you can have pork chops as X and lamb chops as 3X. Tina buys two lamb chops and two pork chops, and she spends £9.60 in total. So how much do lamb chops and pork chops cost? So now we know that lamb chops are three times more than pork chops. We will simply have 3x multiplied by 2, which is going to be your lamb chops, plus as your pork chops multiplied by 2. And that gives us £9.60. So if you put this all together, we have 6x plus 2x equals £9.60. And that gives us 8x, which is £9.60. So now we know the value of the total amount. We can just simply divide this by having £9.60 divided by 8. And that gives us £1.20. So we now know x equals £1.20, and that is the price of a pork chop. So we can write that down as £1.20. But don't forget, a lamb chop costs three times more. So if we have £1.20 and we times this by three, we get £3.60, and that's the cost of our lamb chop. So what did I do here? Well, I used algebra to understand the difference between the two chops, where the pork chop is x and the lamb chop is 3x. I then wrote that out in an equation where I had 3x, which is the cost of the lamb chop, and I multiplied it by 2 because there's two lamb chops, and then the price of the pork chop, which is x, and I multiplied that by 2 as well and equaled it to £9.60. I then expanded the brackets which means 3x times 2 is 6x, and x times 2 is 2x. And because they are like terms, I added it together to give me 8x, which equals £9.60, and then I divided both sides by 8. And that gave me the value of x, which was the pork chops, as £1.20. And then I multiplied it by 3, because the lamb chops were three times more expensive than the pork chops. Marvellous. Okay, moving over to question two. Now again, if you want to see the remaining questions of this paper, please don't forget to go over to our members area on our channel and select this video there. And that brings us to the end of our thrilling journey through the Highgate 11 plus mathematics paper A. I hope this walkthrough has provided you with valuable insights and strategies. Remember, practice makes perfect so continue to challenge yourself with more math problems and keep honing your skills. Don't forget to visit the membership section of our channel where you can then receive all of these questions in more detail. Remember, this is only for members only. I'd hate for you to miss it. Farewell.